welcome to Britpop's React. Join me, BP1 and BP2. Um, and we've got the American Revolution Part 2. Uh, if you remember, we'd already done Part 1. Yes. Um, very interesting. Learned a lot in Part 1. We did we? indeed. Yeah, did indeed. Um, it was kind of at our pitched at our level. So it, we got it in there. We obviously know that it's a bit more complicated than the, the they're making out on here. So thank you for all your comments. We did read through them. But we can get the gist of it, of, of where we it get was the going. Gist of it. Indeed. Um, so this is part two, following on from where we left off. Yeah. Uh, let's just get straight into it and then we can have a little yeah. chat about it in a bit. But, okay. Uh, all right, part two, yeah. here we go. Washington's butt was sufficiently kicked. Winter was here. His troops' morale was low. Some just up and left. Washington yeah. needed to do something, anything to restore faith in the revolution. The British had spread throughout New Jersey and settled in for a winter of drinking cider and partying hard. Nobody expected drinking an cider. attack in the winter, so Washington started making plans for an attack in the winter. The British had hired a large force of Hessian mercenaries from the German states of Hesse Castle and Hesse Hanau to fight the rebels. It was these mercenaries that were stationed across the Delaware River from Washington and his army. And there were more Hessian reinforcements incoming, but they made an unscheduled stop because their commander got thirsty. No, not that kind of thirsty. <laughs> that kind of thirsty. It was Christmas oh. Eve with a blizzard outside when Washington heard the Hessian defenses Thinking were down, and he decided again. to attack. He made a perilous crossing of the icy Delaware River with 2,400 men and marched nine miles to Trenton wow. where he caught the Hessian forces completely off guard. After a short wow. but fierce battle, the Hessians surrendered in droves. It was a much needed victory that sent a clear message not only to the British but to Americans across the colony. The, uh, the war was far from lost. General Cornwallis led the British the forces south photo, to counterattack the Americans. Famous but in this photo. <laughs> Well, what a photo that is. Hey, selfie. Just do a selfie. You got, did you bring uh, the cannon? Did you bring uh, it? Hey, it's brilliant. The uh, famous you, painting, you mean, this one. Can you do, yeah, just catch me it's in the pose. Just catch the painting, Not only, yeah. yeah. Have you finished? Mate, you there with his brush. Oh, all right. Yeah, we can't <laughs> hold this all any longer. <laughs> right freezing we are. Uh, can uh, you hurry up? That's probably why the old sky on the left is just left blank, look. Yeah, well, I mean, these... I mean, these... if that was a bob... Yeah. Eh? Wet yeah. on wet. Wet on wet. The old bob... Uh... Some... Yeah. I think he said Bob Willis, then. That would have been wrong, wouldn't it? It was the old Arsenal goalkeeper, wouldn't he? Bob Willis. Bob um, Willis. Yeah, so... It's an interesting painting, this one, as well, isn't it? Because, you know... The boats, they just look so small. Look at so many yeah, people I mean, in them. They don't even look like soldiers. Well, I, I, mean? I guess they're just, you know, they're not, are they, really? They're just people fighting for their country that got got, got weapons and, and been, you know... Um, just a lot look of Look how them. far... But, I mean, you, you look yeah, down, yeah, the, yeah. the rest look, of it goes on and wait, on. Wait, your head's in the way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, big All head. the way up here, you mean. All the way uh, across the Delaware. Um, but, we've, you know, I've seen this painting before, and you don't really associate it with, you know, 2,500 people cross that river on in the winter. Fair play. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks rough according to the, um, you know, ice and winds, yeah. you know, so not good. You know, you want your thermals on, wouldn't you? You can cross in there. <laughs> to the British, but to Americans across the colonies. The war was far from lost. General Cornwallis led the British forces south to counterattack the Americans, but in a series of battles, Washington's defensive positioning and flanking maneuvers defeated the British three times in ten days, and the British decided to abandon southern New Jersey for the rest of the winter. Washington finally right. set up a winter camp in Morristown, but for the Americans, there was much less partying than the British. Elsewhere, the British had taken Newport, Rhode Island, because it was I a mean, good naval get, base. In the south, they fled to Charleston, just South party. Carolina, which left British yeah. loyalists unsupported and vulnerable to more harassment. And More even harassment. mass expulsion. Congress sent Benjamin Franklin to France on a mission to convince them to join the war. And while the French generally loved any opportunity to hoodwink the Brits, they didn't want to join yeah. unless it was a sure win. So for now, Franklin spent his days chilling out and chasing tail. The British chilling out. couldn't believe the chilling war was over yet, and the pressure tail. was on to end it. So the British came up with a plan. General right. Burgoyne in Montreal and General William Howe in New York would advance through the Hudson Valley and meet in the middle, splitting the colonies in two and thus screwing over the American communication lines. Burgoyne began his movement south, and after taking Fort Ticonderoga quite easily, he then came across heavy American resistance, so he sent Howe a dingle dongle asking if he'd be showing up anytime soon. Meanwhile, dingle Howe had completely Howe abandoned the plan and gone for all our personal glory by capturing the American capital, Philadelphia. He defeated Washington and his army at Brandywine Creek by using the old hit him with a decoy and flank him from behind tactic, and Philadelphia uh, was now in British hands forcing Congress to escape to York. But Burgoyne oh, was left on his own to face the ever-increasing American force in Saratoga. 
American General Horatio Gates teamed up with our old friend Benedict Arnold to deal one final blow to Burgoyne's army. Arnold wanted to take the fight to the British, but Gates wanted to wait for the British to come to them. After a heated debate, Gates, the senior officer, told Arnold to go to his room, but Arnold defied his orders and in the Battle room. of Bemis Heights he charged at the British and obliterated them. Great job, Horatio. By the way, what happened to that other guy who was in Saratoga? Who? Benedict Arnold. Never heard of him. Ouch. Oh. Hey, Benedict, George, yeah. didn't I do a great job? Taking Philadelphia and all? Hmm? Didn't I? You're fired. Both Burgoyne and Howard turned to Great Britain, leaving British General Henry Clinton to take charge of the war. And the war was about to take a nasty turn, because with the victory at Saratoga, the French were finally ready to join the Americans. All right, Benny, we're in. Hey, isn't this kind of funny, you know? Because you're a republic trying to overthrow an absolute monarchy, and I'm an absolute monarchy helping you? Like... Like, could you imagine if your revolution inspired my people to revolt against me, and then they imprisoned me and all my family, <laughs> and they chopped all of our yeah. heads off? Could you imagine? Uh, could you imagine? Mm. That's oh, called yeah. foreshadowing. For now in America, winter was here once again, which meant yet more disease, more starvation, and even a little mutiny. After losing Philadelphia, Washington's job was again on the line. But suddenly, a Prussian guy with a very fancy name, hired by Benjamin Franklin, showed up out of nowhere and said, Hey. I'm here to give your men a European military training. And train them he did. They learned how to shoot accurately, how to march in formation, where to poop and where not to, and strict punishments were handed out to any who didn't comply. Washington's army came out of the winter in 1778. <laughs> did you hear the puff? <laughs> I mean, they've uh, got a certain way of doing it. Yeah. They? That, yeah, they, um, they put some funny humour in it, and, you know, it's very quick. Yeah, it's good. And I didn't realise this. I mean, we're, we're looking back, you know, here, 1778, such a long time ago. Yeah. You know, we just don't appreciate what, had, you know, has happened all those years ago. We sort of live for the now. Um, you know, we're all very much encouraged to live for the now. But it's, it's interesting, isn't it, history? I don't think, you know, something I didn't really pay too much attention to at school. I think it's something you appreciate as you get older. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, interesting to see what, what what happened back then. Certainly, well, from you know, uh, how much being born in Britain and and being, yeah. you know coming in Britain. Don't know what's happened here all those years ago. No matter where you're born, um, no. it's interesting to know what what happened. What was what, the culture you know, how like? It was what shaped. was it like? Yeah, I mean, um, I did when we were doing something else. I, I did see uh, a map of all the places that Britain invaded. There weren't many places they didn't invade back in the day. And you'd think, you know, it's not as simple as we said before, just get on a plane and go. I mean, that, you know, in, in here, yeah. they said that the... the, um, the Sorry, I'm thirsty. Know. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I didn't want to give away the brand. Okay. That would be advertising. Um, um, you know, bringing in... Like I say, they brought the, you know the, the the Germans over to to fight for with us with the Brits, you know that guy going over and and getting assistance from the French. Not going on, and it wasn't it just was a Poles, case of the Poles, Prussians, yep. Um, not just a case of getting in on a plane and going over. That was a massive old journey to do that. Yeah, wow, well, long way. So, yeah. Interesting. Mm. All right, let's keep going a new and improved force, ready to take Philadelphia back from the British. In the end, though, they didn't have to. With the French entry into the war, the British ordered General Clinton to evacuate Philadelphia and consolidate all of the British forces in New York. So Washington sent Benedict Arnold to reoccupy and secure the city as he pursued the gotcha. British through New Jersey on land, eventually finding a good opportunity to attack at Monmouth Courthouse. The battle took place on a sweltering hot summer's day, and as many soldiers died from heat stroke as they did from battle. In the oh, end, wow. after some incompetence slash borderline treatment of Washington's yeah. second in command, yeah. it was a draw and in this war a draw is kind of a victory for the americans next up let's talk about this guy this is john paul jones john paul jones is handsome scottish and absolutely insane when jones. the war first broke He's out a, everyone was like a, a, a a to play. Play. <laughs> the british navy with their meager fleet of converted merchantmen yep try telling that to john paul jones this guy sailed to the british isles somehow captured a british ship off the coast of ireland and brought it back to france then he returned attacking more ships raiding towns and evading capture the entire time these are basically pirate tactics oh. but hey if it works it works. In one incident, okay. he captured a British ship and returned to a Dutch port without an official ensign because his was lost during the battle. That's a big no-no and can have you arrested as a pirate. The Dutch helped him out by... Well, he, so that guy basically just took us on on his own there. Uh, from what is... Again, the way the way that they've done that is impressive. Um, something here, I mean, we're, we're saying here, just reading this bit, the Dutch helped him quickly... Uh, creating a flag designed on the Benjamin Franklin. 
of what the American flag should look like. I, re I was reading in the descriptions that somebody kindly put in that the, um, the the Stars and Stripes was actually based on the East India Tea Company flag, which had the Union Jack up there where the um, stars are, and right. 13 stripes. So it was sort of based off that one as well, you know. Um, okay. that, that's where that originated from. So I say learning so much as we go along that previously just went over our heads because either weren't interested in it when we were younger or just haven't been exposed to it so no very very um uh interesting mm, let's keep going yeah very interesting. quickly creating a design based on benjamin franklin's description of what the american flag should look like and they entered it into their records as an official u.s flag what they came up with looks pretty cool the whole campaign probably played heavily on british morale and brought into question their ability to win the war and fun fact he was so cool that one of the towns he raided in 1778 gave him an official honorary pardon in 1999 keep ripping in heaven john paul jones you're an angel now what the Continental Navy was <laughs> okay. lacking in resources though, the French entry into the war made up for. The French began with naval right. skirmishes in the English Channel, and they sent a large so fleet to America, taking... although it sustained a lot of damage in a storm off Rhode Island. The Americans were All hoping right. for a bigger well. commitment from the French, so John Adams went to France to help Benjamin yeah, Franklin we, continue we've heard of that as well. Oh good, you're finally here. <laughs> Check this out. Hey ladies, hey. I'd like to fly you like a kite, because you're electrifying. <laughs> Isn't this great? Oh, is, this, no. is this what you've been doing? Yeah. Why? Yes. We were sent here on a diplomatic mission to secure military support from France, not to philander with the locals. Wait, no, ladies, really? come back. <laughs> Worst wingman ever. But the Thank Americans you. would get some more help. The Dutch provided aid, although they never formed an official alliance. More significantly, mm. though, the Spanish, who had already been yeah. providing aid, officially joined the war in June 1779. Yeah. They would provide support in the Midwest and the Gulf Coast, campaigns that heavily impacted the Native American tribes in those areas. Both sides actually enlisted the help of Native American tribes throughout the war, sometimes even pitting those tribes against each other. In the summer of 1779, after a series of raids against the Americans by the Iroquois, Washington organized an expedition that burned down more than 40 villages, forcing the tribes to relocate to Canada oh. for British protection. Right. And another okay. group that shouldn't go unmentioned were African Americans, both free and enslaved. They joined both sides yeah, of the of war, course. hoping to gain their freedom. But afterwards, many were simply returned to slavery, particularly those mm. who had fought for the Americans. Despite owning slaves himself, Jefferson had written a condemnation of slavery in the Declaration of Independence, but out of fear of offending okay. the southern colonies, this was removed from the final draft. For wow. the same reason, oh, the American army yeah. stopped enlisting African-American men in 1775, a policy that Washington, a slave owner himself, supported. But they were forced to reverse the policy after the British promised freedom to any slaves who joined them. In general, uh, you stood a better okay. chance of gaining freedom if you fought for the British. However, even those that yeah. left with the British after the war suffered mistreatment and discrimination in their new lives outside of America. Our good friend Benedict Arnold is now in charge of wow. Philadelphia, having a good time, partying down with What's the going on, oh, in down down again? Philadelphia elite. Well, the same elite that had partied from. down with the British when they controlled the city. And suddenly, okay. the people of Philadelphia, including the state governor, started accusing Arnold of having pro-British sentiments. To keep the people happy, Washington wrote a letter rebuking Arnold, calling his conduct imprudent and improper, and that was too many ouchies for Benedict Arnold to handle. He asked Washington to put him in charge of the fort at West Point. Then he contacted West the British, Point? offering to hand the plans of the fort over to them and join their side really our good friend benedict arnold is our good friend no, no more right. luckily the treasonous plans were discovered on okay. a captured british officer but arnold managed to escape before he was arrested as a british brigadier general he would go on to lead raids against american cities most notably really? his raid of richmond That's virginia in 1781 his betrayal shook george washington who had once again set up camp at morristown his leadership somehow held the continental army together through the harshest winter of the war we're entering 1780, and Parliament was hopping mad that the war still wasn't over. The British debt was soaring, and despite taking parts of Massachusetts in late 1779, the North was in a stalemate, so the British decided to make a major shift in strategy to the South, an economically rich area with a higher level of support for the British, or so the British thought. A year earlier, they had captured the underdefended city of Savannah, Georgia easily, and a joint American-French right. counter siege failed. Now, they laid siege to Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, it I mean, there's a lot going on oh, there, there's, right? There's, 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 there's a lot get a going bit complicated on. on. No, it isn't is. It, it is. Yeah. I, I just taken along the the gist of it seems to yeah. be this is a bit like a his and hers war, isn't it? It's a very much sort of oh well, we'll take this bit and we're taking it back, and we, we, we're still here, but we're. I mean, mm. all these lives lost for. Again, yeah. You know what uh, I mean? It's it's just. Yeah, and uh, it's a and, control you know, thing, thing, isn't it? It control. is. I mean, obviously. Um, you know the the native uh, americans being involved uh you know the enslaved african americans so they mm -hmm. were just sort of 
picking on anybody. Of course, I guess at the time you're going, well, yeah, I guess I, I better join up and, and fight because that would make my life easier than not. So, but it's, you know, all the to and fro in and the, there's a lot to take in and sort of keep and people changing well, sides. Take it all in. It's just, we're just watching it. I mean, you know, from that first yeah. video, there's only so much that you can, that you can process. And then the second, yeah. but overall it's like, didn't know all that happened. You know, no. but I roughly know the dates. I roughly know what sort of happened. Yeah. And uh, I didn't realise Roughly actually, know the paintings. Yeah. Didn't realise how many people were actually against us in the end there. We obviously the French, the Americans French, and the Spanish, you know. And the Spanish, All yeah. at that time. So, um, yeah, interesting. All right, let's keep going. American troops surrendering to the British. A costly defeat. The British quickly moved to take control, and they sent stereotypical say, I mean, Hollywood villain with a British accent, Bannister the Butcher Tarleton, into the backcountry where he hunted down rebels and destroyed them with ruthless brutality. The British presence right. also inspired local loyalist militias in the backcountry to rise up against their persecutors. The British really seemed to be onto something with their new strategy, and the ball was very much in Washington's court. I'm gonna send my most loyal general, Nathaniel Green, to the south to stop the British. Gonna have to overrule you there, George. We're sending Hero of Saratoga and your biggest rival, Horatio Gates. Watch this, George. I'm gonna save the day again. Everybody will love me, and I'm gonna get your job. Here I go. And he got into one battle with Cornwallis, got annihilated, and ran away. Alrighty, let's Brilliant. go with your guy. Nathaniel Green knew the British outnumbered his own forces and wouldn't be defeated with conventional tactics, so he had to think outside the box. He split his army into two, said, hey big boy, look at me, and then they went running in two different directions. Cornwallis sent Tarleton after Morgan, and he caught up with him at Cabins, Brilliant. where Morgan proceeded to kick Tarleton's butt. Then the two led Cornwallis on a wild chase through North Carolina, his bigger and better equipped army much heavier and slower than Green's quick and mobile troops. Green led Cornwallis further and further from his supply line, then crossed mm. the Dan River into Virginia, picked up some reinforcements. Like commando turned back to face the now exhausted style. British. At the Battle of Guilford Courthouse, the two sides engaged in vicious close combat. Cornwallis, fearing loss, fired his big guns into the chaotic fighting, cutting down many of his own men. Green retreated, Ooh, giving Cornwallis the victory, mm. but Cornwallis lost a quarter of his men in the fighting, so it oh, felt wow. much more like a British defeat. At this point, both sides desperately needed something to happen soon Still to end the fighting. Numbers, the British though. were running out of money, while the Americans were again facing mm. mutinies as the men went without pay or even basic living needs. Fortunately, the French were now showing up in greater numbers and were ready to oh. fight. After his encounter with Took him a while. Here we go. the only way to win the South was to first prevent the Southern Continental Army from using Virginia as a supply base. So he abandoned the Carolinas, moving to Wilmington and on to Yorktown. Okay. A the, position amount of the, British time, the amount of time that I've noticed so far, they're fighting for it. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, forget it. And Retreat, then they move yeah. out. There's just not enough. And they're just moving around and around and not really gaining anything. You know, it's Got to just... consolidate your position. You know, obviously you're losing men, so you go back, join up with different troops. Um, as you say, you know, the, 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 the tactics that the Americans were using, they're using a lighter force, get in, hit them, get out. That's very much sort of... Based, you know, uh, what the SAS and the commandos do in, you know, raids, you know, light, light mm. in, inflict heavy, um, inflict heavy losses and get out quickly. So, see where that came from. Good tactics. Good tic tacs, mate. Um, tic -tacs. Yeah, but lots going on. Lots going on. It would be easy to supply and support. On his march to Yorktown, he raided many farms, stealing horses and supplies from the locals, but also freeing thousands of slaves, many of whom joined him. Oh, the French saw Cornwallis's new position as an opportunity to land a decisive blow on the British. Washington Rambo. wanted to attack Clinton in New York, but the French said it was a really dumb idea. And to be fair, it was. Instead, Washington okay. sent out fake dispatches to make it look like they would attack Clinton, but secretly their combined force marched all the way down to Virginia. A large French fleet uh, wow. under the command of Comte de Grasse arrived and successfully cleared the British Navy out of the Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake. The combined land okay. and naval forces then laid siege to Cornwallis's army in Yorktown. The American and French forces tightened in around the city, raining artillery down on Cornwallis who desperately appealed to Clinton for aid. But Clinton was unusually chilled out about the whole thing. Cornwallis held out for nearly a month <laughs> before he had no choice so but to snack. surrender. Over 7,000 yeah. British troops were captured. Wow. A crushing defeat. And with that, Parliament 7, had wow. the end of its rule. The war just wasn't worth it, and it needed to end now. The British still held New York, Charleston, and Savannah, but fighting between the two sides mostly ceased as peace negotiations opened up in Paris. The resulting treaty in 1783 saw Great Britain remove its troops from American soil, recognize U.S. independence, and cede territory up 
to the Mississippi River. In return, the Americans okay. agreed to pay any debt still owed to Britain and gave fair treatment to any colonists who had remained loyal to the crown. The Spanish got wow. Florida, while the French got an economic crisis that led to its own revolution a decade later. Washington <laughs> retired to his home in Mount Vernon, wishing his men farewell by saying, I most devoutly wish that your latter days may be as prosperous and happy as your former ones have been glorious and honorable. He hoped to live out the rest of his days in peace, but unfortunately for him, a number of people wanted him to be the first leader of the new country. And by a number of people, okay. I mean literally everyone. The first election campaign in American history was basically a grassroots effort to convince Washington to accept the office. He was sworn in on April 30th, 1789, and he himself established many of the standards and limitations of what the American leader should be. First of all, there was debate on what he should be called. Is he a king? Is he our glorious leader? In the end, they went for a word that at the time was pretty modest president, like the president of your local bowling club or office bake ah. sale committee. He set up a cabinet of expert advisors, knowing that no president could know everything, no matter how much of a stable genius they claimed to be. He proposed well. major legislation to Congress and gave an annual... <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> you know. The few people that would be, you know, debating uh, that one. How times have changed recently. Uh, yeah, again, you know, uh, still a lot going on. I mean, the, the, the thing that's sort of quite mind-blowing is the fact that, you know, they said that um, seven, you know, mm. lost seven thousand troops of Brits. I mean, you've got to ship them down there to start with. There, there must yeah, have been only yeah, so yeah. many Boats. in Britain that we had that were sort of, you know, of um, fighting age in good health. You got by the time you got to get down there as well, they probably lost people on the way due to. Well, the life storms. expectancy back there yeah. was extremely a lot less, wasn't it? As well, if you think about it, so you, the uh, people that have gone were, must have been fairly young, I would imagine. Indeed. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, it's, it's amazing so all this stuff happens, doesn't it? You know, so far away. But it, it's almost like I don't know how you maybe it's coming across. It's almost like a friendly war, in a way. Like, do you know what I mean? It was oh, right, lots of lives gone, lots of attacking. But I mean, in a way of like the way the peace process works. You know, oh, we just withdraw our troops. It's just, it's just interesting, isn't it? Because you'd think you just keep going and going and going. I suppose it gets to no, a point where you've just lost. Yeah, eventually, you, you got you, you either, you know, like I say, uh, I guess for us it was more people getting involved. You're not just fighting the Americans now. We're probably running out of troops, running out of money, running out. Of, you know, I guess like with mm. recent wars, you know, it starts off and then back home people start saying we, we don't back this anymore, don't, you know. Vietnam, yeah. Afghanistan, all those ones. And if you start losing your people at home, so then if you can get out, uh, with with sort of some uh, something out of uh, out of all the the effort, then I guess you agree to it, don't you? You normally got somebody in there mediating as well. But uh, all right, interesting. Yeah, that was called France in this. In this uh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> le France. <laughs> Trust the State of the Union address to keep his own power in check. He stated that the U.S. should remain neutral in foreign conflicts, and in the end, mm -hmm. he voluntarily gave up his power after just two terms. He could have made the presidency anything he wanted, but his careful and cautious actions helped yeah, set the president go. of an office that is powerful in its limitations, decisive through its diplomacy, and respected in its humility. And so the United States was born, and everything was perfect. It had no problems, <laughs> not a single one. Certainly nothing that okay. would, I don't know, cause such an extreme divide that it would lead to a civil war. So, oh. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Quick quiz. Name the most American okay. thing you can think of. Baseball? Bold Eagles? Calling the winner of an America-only sports tournament world champion? Or maybe math and science? <laughs> we won't play the quiz. Uh, but that was right. interesting. It was, yeah. It was good. Uh, you know, it's good that we did follow it up. Uh, mm. It got quite heavy towards the, you know, in the middle bit there. There was a lot going on. And I guess they, the guys have got to try and um, explain it in such a way that it's still simple, but a lot to take in and absorb, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because I, I, I knew, obviously, the, the British involvement in America. Mm -hmm. um, but I never knew why, when, how. Um, so a lot of those questions that I had there have been answered, you know, from a history point of view. And in a, in a fun, interactive way as well, even for us, yeah. you know, uh, you know, who are older, you know, it's these are the sort of things they, they need to be showing in schools as well because, yeah. you know, it, I if it piques somebody's interest, this. no, you know, if it piques, if it piques a young person's interest to then follow up and go and, and, and uh, do further investigation themselves mm -hmm. with, um, you know, the, the internet and everything else that's available, that's brilliant. Um, you know, if you've got some old 
stuck in the mud guy stood at the front of a class with his corduroy jacket in you know leather elbow patches on going oh and then this happened then the french came in then they went and you like you just switched off didn't you, you know? yeah oh so, yeah you're off yeah i can't remember i was probably just drawing pictures yeah. of dicks and tits and stuff whilst i was sat in history <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. And we brought it down to that school. level again. <laughs> well, you know, there you go. There you go. Um, there you go. That was really interesting. Uh, what did you think out there? Yeah. I mean, are you American? Did you, you learn of this sort of history? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a Is good it one. Is it taught a much better to, to you guys over there? I'm guessing, you know, because it's part of your history. I mean, we do um, know our first world uh, and second world war history over here. That's taught quite, quite a lot in schools. I'm not sure about nowadays, but mm. you know, uh, so yeah, there you yeah, go. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us at Britpop Shack. Until tomorrow for another reaction. It's a goodbye from me. Goodbye from him. Hello. He's a 20th century boy.